Hello, my name is Taylor and I'm going to show you how to set up your goals inside Monarch Money. This is something that I've gotten a few questions on, how to properly link certain transactions to show up as related to your goals, as well as just how to how to create a goal, how to get that all set up in Monarch and how do you treat it inside your budget. So let's let's dive in. So first we're gonna go to your goal section. So we're gonna go over to this side right here and go to your goals. I love that Monarch Money has this section. I think it's so fun to be able to get a kind of vision board going on your uh, financial priorities, but also to see your progress, see how like get a progress bar of how close you are to reaching that goal. Uh, you can also assign all your savings to existing goals so that way you make sure everything is really being accounted for uh, when you're creating a budget. So the first step is to go into this top corner here and go to add your goals. So now there's a few, four goals already in here. You'll be prompted to do this if you've never set up goals already. That you'll, uh, It'll ask you what kind of goals you're trying to work on. Now, most of my clients are having some kind of savings goal, of course, and then they're using uh, the goal for the credit card and normally, and some sometimes other debts. Now, most of my clients are only using the credit card one as far as debts go. And the reason is, and I'm actually going to show you the reason uh, as we go forward, but uh, there's, there's oftentimes a little bit of an issue tracking your progress towards student loan and mortgage because if you, uh, so depending on the account you have, it might not, you're student loan or your mortgage may not pull um, the transactions to show Monarch like, hey, there was a deposit to pay off your mortgage. Some some companies do have that. And if that sounds really confusing, just bear with me. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. So most of my clients have some kind of savings goal and then we use a credit card goal. The rest of this are normally just line items in the budget. And I don't really uh, use goals for this. The only one I really use as far as debt goes is the credit card one. Um, but I'm sure there's exceptions to that. So, uh, you know, go with what you, you what your situation is, but just as a general, um, generally for me and my clients. So the one we're gonna do is, let's just do a, um, we're gonna say for a vacation. And I'm gonna click on that one, I'm gonna go to next. And now it just added another vacation in here. Now what's cool is that you can choose the priority by dragging and dropping whatever the priority is. And I'm gonna say I really need this vacation, so we're gonna drag it all the way to the top. And I'm gonna customize the image, which I think is the fun part. Like, hey, where are you going? Well, let's say I'm going to Hawaii or something, I don't know. Let's get a fun image in here that's gonna like really inspire me to stay on track with my goals. And of course it's gonna be the sea turtles. <laughs> so <laughs> we're gonna do the little turtle there and we're gonna press save and you can do that for all of these goals. And I highly recommend you do it. It is very uh, motivating to see the, the kind of image of what you're trying to go for. Uh, and so now it's telling you how much you want to save for this. Now, sometimes you, there are goals like retirement, I would say is one of them is like, hey, how much more do you want to save for retirement? Like some of you might have that exact number, but some of you also might not. It's more of like, a, hey, I want to save 15% of my income. Um, so it might not, it might be a little hard to put a total number. Same with like a down payment. Maybe you're just like, I'm just going to try to get as much as I can until I have to buy a house in six months. Maybe you don't know exactly what that down payment needs to be. Um, but for the most part, it's really good to have very cl a clear expectations of what your goal needs to be. And so if I know that I'm going to try to save, you know, I would like to have $6,000 in savings before I book this vacation to make sure I have enough, then that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and then a very important thing here is that you're adding accounts that are going to be related to this goal. Now, when you do this, um, it's going to tell you, you can add multiple accounts to the same goal. For this one right here, you'll notice that my savings account can't be attached to this goal because I already used the entire balance of my savings goal for the down payment. And so if I'm like, well, you know, maybe I don't want to always use the entire account balance. Maybe right now there is 50,000, um, you know, for my, uh, the down payment for the house, but I don't want to use all of that for the down payment of the house. So maybe I just do 45,000, 45,000 of the $50,000 available in my, uh, in my savings account is going to now be allocated for the down payment of my house. And I can add any other accounts that I want. Maybe I want some of the brokerage account to also be there. Maybe I want all of it to be there. Um, and then we're going to press done. But now that I unclicked the use the entire balance, I can go into my vacation savings and go into that exact same savings account and figure out how much of my savings can be used for this vacation. Well, I'm just going to put maybe 3000 on it. I'm willing to use 3000 of the existing savings I have, and I'm going to try to save for the rest of the vacation, let's say. And it'll even tell you too, like, hey, notice that you have 45000 um, saved for a down payment. It would list all the ones that are attached to this goal. Now you can put, now what's, what's important here is that 
now that that savings account is attached to the goal, that is the only the only um, transactions that I can link to this goal are the ones that are uh, with this savings account. For example, if you save you know a thousand dollars, but you're not going to put it in the savings account, you're going to put it in the brokerage. Well, then you'll never be able to link that um, transaction, that deposit in the brokerage uh, towards this vacation because it's not connected to this goal. You would have to um, turn that feature on. And right now I have the brokerage, the entire brokerage can't save for the down payment. I can turn that off for the down payment. But that is kind of where the biggest hang up is for a lot of people is um, that if the accounts are not connected and so you can't link it to the goal. So let's say I'm going to spend $300 a month at least. Well, we better do more if I want to go on vacation quickly. Let's go $600 a month to save for this vacation. I can set my monthly savings goals. This will auto populate into your budget every single month. And so if this is like a, hey, I would like to be saving for this, but I am really only saving. So like if you have a inconsistent income, let's say, if you are a business owner, you're working on commission, your entire budget is probably going to be based on your regular fixed expenses. Your savings goals are probably going to be related to if you increase your income by $1,000 next month. If you make that sell, then you'll put money towards the vacation or savings. If that's the case, I would put zero here for now, um, just because the, the goal that you have is actually linked to more income. And that way, this won't, in your budget, won't completely, um, otherwise, it'll just show up every single time. And so if you don't end up hitting that income, goal, you're gonna to have to manually enter this as zero rather than just putting in savings exactly how much you ended up making more that month. So let's say I made another extra $300 more. I can still always put $300 in the budget and savings, but now it's not going to automatically do that for me. So just as a side note there, you can have it automatically show up. So this one's going to automatically show up at $600 is going to be in my budget to save for my goal, or you can put zero and then just do it manually as you as you accrue money in your accounts or as you bring in more income. Uh, for retirement goals, it'll ask you how much of your pre-paycheck income goes to this, so the money that's not um, being a part of Monarch, right, because it's going to be before you get your paycheck, so you'll assign that. Okay, so now we have our progress for our $3,000 vacation. So I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like to add uh, transactions to the uh, savings account or the, the goal. All right, so you can see here I um, went ahead and transferred, let's say, $600 from my checking account to that savings account that is linked to the goal. So the first transaction is a negative 600 because it's moving money out of my checking account into my savings account. Now you'll notice when uh, it's like, hey, I just made a $600 contribution. I just sent that money to my savings account. I want to attach it to the goal. What that's where people get hung up is like, well, I can't. There is no goal. And remember, it's because that checking account is not attached to your goal. It is not being tracked in your goal. And so the one that gets attached to the goal is the one that's uh, actually the account, that, the joint savings account, the savings account that we attached to the goal. Now I can do vacation or down payment, which what was the $600 for? I'm going to put it towards vacation. Um, I don't think you can split a transfer. So if you're transferring like, you know, $5,000 a month to your savings and some of it's going to a sinking fund, vacation, down payment for a home, you can't really split that in the goals. Uh, but I'm going to show you what you can do instead. All right, so I just transferred $5,000 into the savings account, let's say. Um, I can attach it to the goals, but let's say it's going towards both. And so what you're going to do is just kind of ignore the goal section. We're just going to leave it alone. We're going to go into goals. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, edit the accounts. And you'll see that there's the there's the savings account here and there's the savings account, the Chase account that we're saving for for the down payment. What I can do is press edit this account and I'll see that, oh, hey, there's some savings available to assign. So maybe um, a portion of that is going towards the uh, down payment of the house and a portion is going towards the vacation. Now, unfortunately, the, when I transferred the money into this demo account, it's not showing that the actual balance and the joint transfer stage. But hypothetically, if I did transfer 5000 in here, you would see that 5000 sitting there available. And then you can go in and assign those savings. So if you don't have to, if you don't want to uh, apply a transaction to a goal, you can just manually do it right here with whatever available savings is left over in that account. 
So it comes back to what I told you before. It was a little bit tricky in why I don't normally add um, retirement down oh, or mortgage or loans is because, as you guys have noticed, and what Monarch is working on, uh, so this should change. This could be changing any day now. But inside your 401k or your brokerage or the yeah the retirement accounts, uh, you will you can add holdings, but there's not transactions. And so the $3,000 you send to your 401k every month, if it's leaving your checking account, but there's no um, you know, corresponding receiving transaction inside the 401k because the 401k is not pulling fun, uh, transactions into Monarch, you will not be able to attach it to the goal. So that $3,000 you send from your checking account, so like just like right here, or the $600 you sent from your checking to your retirement fund, because the checking account is not related to your retirement goal, you will not be able to attach it. Um, and so that's often the case with like uh, loan accounts, mortgages, sometimes, sometimes they do. So this is not all the time, but sometimes those loans, retirement accounts will not pull in transactions uh, from the institution. For example, right here for Wells Fargo, this is also fairly common. Um, and it looks like you can't actually add them right here. So you could put a receiving, hey, I paid off my mortgage. I paid it off by 1250. I made an extra payment. You can relate that to your goal kind of thing. Um, but not every account allows you to do that. And so um, unless that, is, again, just to really hone in there, if the account is not attached to the goal, then the transactions will not be able to be attached to those goals. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you don't necessarily like you want the goals. For example, I still put in my account like a retirement goal. So let's say I am trying to save a thousand dollars for retirement. I am still putting that in my budget because I want to allocate the funds that I have coming into my income. I want to use this money for retirement. I won't see an actual transaction though because my the retirement account is not going to feed any transactions. It's not going to show Monarch the deposit I made. And that's okay. As long as you guys are budgeting and you're actually sending the money, um, then you can still put that in the budget. You're just, again, not going to see that show up in the actual uh, actual thing here, but you still want to mark that transfer as a transfer to a retirement account, not an expense, and then it will still show up as far as your savings rate goes in your cash flow report. Uh, so this number right here, the savings rate, as long as you mark those as transfers uh, to the retirement accounts or the, whatever accounts it is, it will still include in your savings rate. Uh, so again, it's still really important to put something in earmark funds towards the budget, whether or not you actually see a transaction, again, is going to be um, dependent on if the uh, account that you related to the goal is actually feeding transactions into Monarch. Uh, and so that's really just about it. I think that's all I can think of as far as showing you how to use goals. Actually, there's one more thing. So I recently did a video on uh, how to handle credit cards and Monarch Money, and I showed how to handle that goal for credit cards. And I just want to make a caveat to uh, one of the systems I showed you, one of the ways you can handle credit cards. If you are still putting money in your credit card and trying to pay down a balance, so you're carrying a balance, but you're still using the card, uh, I mentioned that you could link all transactions to the credit card and it will uh, show you how much you need to pay off to pay off the new transactions as well as reach the goal for the extra payment. Now, something I need to show, which I feel like was an update that Monarch did. I feel like this wasn't happening before or I was crazy. Um, but something to know is that now that if you do, if you do that, so let's say that this Peloton was put on my credit card and this is a credit card I'm trying to pay off. If I relate this to the goal, you're going to notice something here. Um, I spent $40 here on the Peloton and I'm just going to refresh really quickly. But now that I related it to the goal, you're going to see, hey, where did the $40 charge for the Peloton went go, right? And it's because it moved that $40 that you just spent on Peloton. It doesn't want you to put it towards that goal. It wants you to take that and put it to zero now and move that $40 to pay off the credit card. Now you'll see right here, there's the negative $40. I really don't love that because I still want to see how much I spent in fitness, even though it's going on the credit card. Um, it still should have the transaction in there. It's still labeled as fitness, um, but it shows you the actual amount you spent as $0 because it moved the actual expense to the credit card 
specific hard goal. So I do not actually recommend, I mean, it's up to you how you want to handle as long as you know what's going on. But I don't really love that, especially when it comes to like seeing cash flow. I think it comes out of the cash flow too, or no, it should, it's still actually in there. Okay. So it still is a part of your cash flow because you can see where your money went. But as far as the budget goes, it doesn't add up, which is fine. Um, if that's, if you're fine with that, you can see it where the money spent. It still is counting the $40, but it's not showing in the budget because it wants you to now take that $40 that you put towards the Peloton um, and, you know, put, change that to zero and move that $40 into goals, into the credit card goals to pay off. That's what it's trying to trigger you to do. I don't really love that. So now what I do with my clients is I only mark the credit card payments and not all the transactions. If you are trying to pay down a credit card, um, you really need to stop using the credit card that is highly recommended um, to be successful in your budget, to uh, make as much progress as you possibly can is if you are carrying a balance, stop using the card, get it paid down, and then you can start using the card again once it's paid down and you can pay off the statement in full. All right, so that's the last thing regarding goals. Uh, if you have any questions, if there's something I missed, please let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts, feedback, questions, so I can continue to make awesome videos for you guys that you can uh, be successful with Monarch and uh, have a successful budget. So, Thank you so much and please subscribe, uh, please comment and I will uh, talk to you all soon.